is uh, you matter. Each and every one of you matter. Moms, you matter. And we take one day out of the year to, to, to say that, right? But each and every day, you matter. You may not be a mom. You may be a mom going through it. You may be a grandma. You may be a little, you know, you, the roles uh, just add as you grow older sometimes in each different stage of life. Um, but you matter. There is a God that loves you. There's a God that wants to, to know you. And you heard it from, you've heard it so many times this morning. I just want my children to know Jesus. And we're going we're gonna to take a moment to, um, um, it's a different day, right? We're having fun. Little things are a little different. I asked my, I thought about asking my wife to co-lead with me today. You know, that was about six weeks ago, and then I prayed about it for two weeks, and then I said, "Hey, Cindy, you want you, you think think maybe you could help me here? You know, it's Mother's Day, and I don't know a, a clue how to be a mother." And she goes, "Because it's out of her realm, right?" It's out of her realm. Uh, she come up here and sing songs and enjoy, but to come up and, and, and talk to you uh, as, you know, she's just, I'm, I'm afraid I just won't know what to say and blah, blah, blah. And I said, don't worry. I'll take care of it. I'll make it easy. It's not that hard. She finally said yes. So I'm going to invite Cindy to come join me for a few minutes. And a couple of thoughts just to start off. Uh, a Jewish proverb says, a mother understands what a child does not say. And I think you as, as mothers know that. Sometimes uh, uh, us dads don't have a clue what's going on, right? And, and moms, moms understand. And another one, a Spanish proverb, an ounce of mother is worth a pound of clergy. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> right? Uh, an ounce of mother is, is much more than, than I can speak into their lives. So I asked Cindy just to um, write down some, some thoughts uh, on motherhood and we, we'd talk about them for, for a little bit. And uh, we start off with these verses out of Deuteronomy 11, verses 18, which say these, these words. So commit yourself. So commit yourself wholeheartedly to these words of mine. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your foreheads as reminders. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you're on the road and when you're going to bed and when you're getting up and write them on the doorposts of your house and your gates so that as long as the sky remains above the sky, earth, you and your children may flourish in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors. So, uh, Cindy, how did you commit yourself to that? How did you talk to them, to our children? How did you raise them upright? Because it's, it's all her fault. They're good. Uh, <laughs> I was the other influence in their life, so. <laughs> you were good, too. <laughs> um, first of all, I just want to say um, that I thank God for blessing me um, to have the mother that I have. And um, I told her this morning it was all her fault that I'm up here because uh, I've always wanted to be a mom and follow her example. Um, and, uh, but I thank the Lord for blessing me um, with the opportunity of being a mom. So um, I just thank him for that also. So um, I think with this verse, um, to write them on your doorpost and everything like that, I think it, go, it reminds me of uh, when we was talk the kids in at nighttime, I gave each one of them time, and we prayed every night. And we would think of something special that they had on their mind or their heart. And before they went to sleep, we would always say a little prayer, and then, you know, it's time to go to the next one. And I would, ha I would do that with all three of them. And um, that was something that um, was very important to all of us, that we would, we would have bedtime prayer and talk time. And uh, John 10.10 10 talks about the thief comes only to st steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have life to the full. How, how, do we, how do we speak into our kids' life? You know, we need to have life to the full ourselves, but how do we speak into our kids, our grandkids, those that the Lord has put in our place so that they, they can live life to the fullest? And what are those things that, that, you, that you did or we did? So um, the first thing is, is when they get up in the morning, um, I always try to have it calm. You know, I wasn't really a yeller, um, and I would always have breakfast ready, and things were ready, and it was out the door at a certain time, and things like that. And of course, we had one that wasn't a morning person. Um, so eventually, I'm like, you set your own alarm and start your day. Because, you know, it just wasn't working, you know, so you have to work with them, too, and figure out what works for them. But it was just a calm morning, just breakfast, 
and it wasn't every morning, believe me, we had our times. <laughs> but as much as we could, um, we uh, would always have family dinners, um, and I think that was very important, that we'd sit around the table, we'd all talk together and, and talk about life, um, and then um, sports came in, and then it's like, oh, now, um, okay, well, we'll have a picnic. So we'd go to the sports field, whether it was practice or whatever, and we'd have a picnic, Sometimes it was in the car because you know the weather in New York, um, you know, but we would always try to have that together time also um, and made it very important in our lives. Which goes along with in investing in our kids. Ephesians 5, 16 and 17 say these words, make the most out of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. And, and I would ask you to, you know, um, Make the most of every opportunity. Are you, are you investing in someone else's life? Are you investing in your children's life, your grandkids, or your spouse, whoever that might be? Or are you just, are you just spending time? Right? Are, are you investing or are you just spending your time? Uh, it makes a difference. And we've got this limited amount of time that we have to invest in others. And, and how, did, how did you do that? How did we do that? Um, well, I always tell moms that to... Um, be where the children are. You know, don't, don't hurry them along or don't try to slow them back. You know, be where they are. Um, so when it was time for the nursery, we were part of the nursery. When it was time for Sunday school, you know, we, we got involved in Sunday school. Um, when it was um, time to do activities after school, they were doing Boy Scouts or 4-H or this or that. Well, we had a kids club here, so we did kids club, you know, and uh, clubhouse. And, um, I wrote my sister into that too, but <laughs> um, we did VBS in the summers, you know, and, and we were part of that um, because we invested in them um, when it came time for youth group, you know, we invested in the youth group, you know, and we had an open door refrigerator policy at our house. Um, that would be really expensive now, but we did it. Um, and um, you'd be surprised at um, all the people you become moms to because there's a lot of kids your kids bring. Um, and, uh, but it, it's just, it was just how it was. And, and uh, so we always tried to, and I'm not saying you have to be the leaders of these things or anything, but just be there with them and invest that with them. Um, be parts of it. If there's a activity you can do, do it, you know, because it's really important, I think. Yeah, amen. And then talk about uh, having tough love, uh, but also uh, tenderhearted. Uh, in John 1, 14, it says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Jesus we're talking about, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And there's times where you just got to speak in their lives with the truth, and, uh, but you, you know, you've got to do it in the right way so they learn and they grow and, and you don't exasperate them, right? Being a hypocrite or whatever that might be. So uh, maybe some stories on speaking into their lives. So, um, you know, our kids are perfect. Are your kids perfect? Because mine are perfect, you know? Yeah, yeah, right? Your kids are perfect. Um, so I got this phone call from the teacher at school, and they tell me that Joe had signed my name on a paper. And I'm like, no, not Joe. No, he didn't. No, no, not my Joe. And so I had to go in and look at the signature, and I'm like, oh, he did. <laughs> like, this is not my signature. Like he's fifth grade or something, you know? right? Like you can't tell. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was bad. It was bad. It wasn't in crayon, but it was bad. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, and, and I look over and Joe's like, <sighs> you know, and he punished himself. Do you know what I mean? I didn't have to punish him because he had, he had already put himself through a whole lot, you know. Um, so that's where the grace comes in, you know. And uh, the truth was, you know, he had to admit to me that, you know, yeah, he signed my name. And he had just forgotten, honestly. And uh, because, you know, how you have to sign the homework sheets and stuff, you know. Um, but our, um, our Billy, uh, we were at the grocery store, and he was a little bit smaller. And, uh, you know, how they have all those things in reach that you can touch and grab and, and, as you're checking out, right? And you're trying to load the stuff on the cart, and you're trying to do everything yourself, you know? And uh, we get out to the car, and Joe goes, Mom, Billy took gum. I said, oh, no, he didn't. And, yeah, Billy took them. Um, so I finished unloading the groceries, and uh, we went back in, and he had apologized to the person that was the checkout person. And, um, and he, you know, he finally got the, I'm, I'm sorry, out, you know. And uh, we got back to the car, and I said, oh, you're not done. 
I said, we, I said, Jesus sees everything we do, everything. And he saw you take that gum. Now, whether anybody else had seen you, he still knows so you need to apologize to Jesus too. And uh, so we said a prayer right there before we left um, the parking lot and everything um, that he had to pray and, and say that he was sorry that he took that gum. So I, I hope that instilled the lesson in him that, you know, no matter if you think no one's looking, God is always looking. He's always there. And I don't really remember any stories on Andy, and I don't want to tell because I'm the youngest and he's the youngest and we're just perfect. <laughs> How many youngest are out there? <laughs> so, oh, we know so that's know. not right. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you know, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that disclaims it right there, Paul. <laughs> oh, he's the oldest and the youngest. Oh, yes. And a couple other things. Routine is important. Uh, Psalm 92, 2 says, It is good to proclaim your unfailing love in the morning, your faithfulness in the evening. Um, you want to talk about routine at all? Yeah, I just think routine is very important, you know, so they know what to expect. They know where their boundaries are. Um, you're not making things up as the day goes on and change it the next day. You know, everybody knows where their boundaries are. And I, I think that's, God has that for us also, that he has boundaries for us to stay in also. And uh, hopefully that helped instill that. And then, of course, the golden rule, do unto others as, you know, even with your brother. That was tough. Listening. Uh, James 1.19, my dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Listening is huge in our relationships, and uh, we tried to listen. Yeah. What? What? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Set her up right there. Um, I think it was important for me to be there like for 10 minutes after they came home from school. You know, they were just like, <laughs> okay, mom, see ya. You know, but, you know, it was just important, I think, and, and uh, just to be there for them, you know, and then we would also do that again before bed, and we'd talk about the day during dinner and stuff, but um, just to be there and listen and ask how their day was. And most, and most important, as you've heard throughout today, people talking, of just know the truth of, of Jesus, mm -hmm. right? Um, we, Dr. Shaw talked about that last week, and uh, we read out of John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, no man come to the Father except through me. And there's so much in that verse. He is the way. He is the truth. He is life. And, and you know, how, how, how can we instill that into our children, into those that God has, has given to us? And not only children, grandchildren, all of those. So um, any thoughts there? Any last words of wisdom? I have wisdom, but um, <laughs> I think um, don't ever underestimate your children. Um, I see the kids lining up here, so I'll go quick. But don't ever underestimate them. Um, Billy was about 16, and he wanted to get that first job. You know how we're ready to go to work because we want the money, right? So um, he goes, okay, Mom. He goes, I'm not going to go into retail and I don't want to do that fast food stuff. And, I don't, and I'm like, oh, my word, his list is, this kid is never going to get a job, right? In my head, I'm not telling him that, but in my head. And uh, so a couple days later, it wasn't even a week, it was a couple days yep. later, he comes home and he goes, Mom, I got a job. Oh, what are you going to do, Bill? And I'm expecting one of these things that he said he wasn't going to do. And, and he goes, I'm going to work at Fletcher's and I'm going to help move pianos. There you go, right? Who thought that, right? You know, and so don't ever underestimate your children, um, you know, and when they're trying out for a sport or something, Joe tried out for um, basketball, and he was a junior. He never played basketball. Um, he Tried like, out for varsity, never know, played in any and leagues. We're thinking, he was going to horse heads, and we're like, mm, boy, you know, but he worked so hard every day. He worked so hard, and... Uh, he tried out for basketball, and he made the team. And we're like, wow. Okay, so, all right, Lord, you're teaching me, too. Like Dale said, don't ever underestimate your kids because you learn from them also. Um, so let them, let them flourish and let them do what God has called them to do, even if you think maybe. But um, don't forget, just um, stay in each part of their life where they're at. You know, don't, don't rush it and don't, you know... Um, I remember, you know, it was just some tough days, 
and somebody's crying, and it's just uh, everybody's whiny, and you know, and and uh, out of my perfect kids, this happened. Yeah, it did. And um, you know, you're thinking to yourself, I can't, I can't take one more minute. And somebody said to me, Oh, don't worry, they grow so fast. You'll just love these days. And I'm going. No, no, I'm not <laughs> loving this day, you know. And so what I would do is I would snatch one of them up and I'd sit in the rocking chair and we'd just sit together and sing Jesus Loves Me. And I think it was hearing the words Jesus that calmed me, which calmed them. So um, whatever, whatever it takes in your life, whatever you find that works for you and God has given you, Use that, but enjoy each each stage of their life. There's struggles. It's not it's not easy, right? right. It, it, there's so many struggles in each phase of life, and and uh, Cindy's famous quote in our house with, to the kids. <laughs> well, when they got a little bit older, you know, nobody likes those teenage years, um, and when they got a little bit past that, I would just look at them and say, "I liked it when you were little." So because I made the decisions for you and the decisions I made for you are better than the ones you're making for yourself. But you've got to release them, right? And you've got to be with them and you've got to love them in, in every, every situation. And um, It's not easy. It's not easy being a parent in, in, the, in the perfect family. There's no perfect family. There's struggles. But know that it, it matters what you do. It, it matters to go through the struggles. It matters to reach out and get help. It matters to listen to those that have gone before you and, and, and be part of that. Um, any last thoughts? No, I just, I think we've all heard mom's hearts today. Yeah. 